crafty friends welcome to today's video and the start of a new mini series featuring one die but several cards so my idea was really to take one simple basic die and see how many cards how many different cards i could make with it it's not the only die i'm going to use on the card but i wanted to do a kind of bang for your buck video series just looking at a simple die and lots of different ways of using it so what i've done is i have taken this die and cut a bunch of tags out of mixed media paper and the reason that i've chosen mixed media paper is that it will give me most flexibility i can watercolor on it i can ink blend on it i can stamp on it i can heat emboss on it i can dry emboss on it i can use acrylic on it i can splatter on it i can do all sorts on it so over the next few videos i will be using this die and these tags to create some different cards for you so if you'd like to watch all the videos in this little tag die mini series do subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any and for this video i am going to be using three tags to make a birthday card so my first idea for a card is to have three tags on the front of my card lined up like that three is a really lovely number the human brain likes to see odd numbers of things so i'm going to choose three and I'm gonna pick the middle tag to be my focal point. So this is the star of the show, and these two are gonna be the supporting actors. So I'm going to do the main one first, because that way I'll know how much I need to tone down the other two. I'm gonna do some blending, and I've got three colors here, Bellini, do -si do and Coral Cabana from the Catherine Pooler Party Collection. do -si do and Coral Cabana are red oranges and Bellini is an orange, so they'll work together nicely. And now I've got my grip mat. I can pop my tag on there and it's probably not going to shift. Sometimes they do wiggle around a bit, but I think it's going to stick down today. So first things first, I'm going to add a light blush of a Bellini all over the tag so it's got colour all over it and Bellini is the least saturated the lightest of these three colours and this is an orangey colour so I want to have some sort of tone on tone blending going down the card so I want to mask off the top so that the top of the tag stays that nice light orange colour and then I'm going to add a bit of washi tape because I want to have my blending to have a bit of a raggedy edge. So I can go in with a bit more Bellini and go in quite strongly so it darkens up. And I'll take that off and now you can see that raggedy torn edge and the difference between the two colours. Now I'm going to move that down a bit and I'm not going to use Bellini, I'm going to use do -si do which is the red orange but it's the next darkest colour. I'm not going to put too much on because I want to add my coral cabana at the bottom, I want that to be the darkest colour but I want there to be an obvious line. Now the trouble I find with these Catherine Pooler inks is that once they're down they make the paper quite slick so sticky things don't always stick to it so you have to be a bit kind of uh, gentle or think about what direction you're going to ink from. So now the darkest colour, Coral Cabana. So I'm going from this direction so I press down the washi tape rather than lift it up and colour underneath it. And I think with my two supporting tags, I'm going to get the Bellini, just give my brush a really good clean to get those darker colours off. and give my tags a Bellini blush. You 
could colour a whole piece of card with the Bellini say and then die cut your tags but what you get when you cut the tag and then colour them is you get a nice darker edge forming and in these little stitch lines and around the circle you get a bit more of a concentration of colour so it, it highlights those areas and gives them a bit of uh, depth I think. So there we go we've got some Bellini coloured tags so the colours should smooth out on those a little bit as they dry. But with these, I think I'm going to spatter on some water just to give them a bit of texture. I'll mop that up with a bit of paper towel. So now they've got some texture of their own. For this card, my card blank is going to be five by seven inches. And I've got a panel here that is a little bit smaller all the way around, maybe an eighth of an inch. But I want to create an embossed panel. So I've got this piece of smooth white cardstock, which will run from the top to the bottom. And I've got this leafy, what do you call it, embossing folder. This is one I found at the charity shop today. It's a tattered lace one, and it is eight by eight-ish. Uh, which is going to be too big to go through my cuttle bug, so I'm going to have to fire up my electronic die cutting machine. So there we go, that's now got a really beautiful pattern on it. I'm going to run my embossing tool gently down the two long sides to make it look as if it's been die cut, just to bevel those edges. And now I've got my panel that can sit on there, so with the side like that. This is going to go in the middle. I'm not going to see much of those leaves once I've covered them up with the tags, but it just adds a little something. So that's going to go something like that. So I think I'll get this stuck down, and I'm going to use some tacky glue, high tack glue. Just pop it. And the bits that we in contact put that on about there and then trim off the overhang and I shall just go along here to bevel those edges again and give it that finished look and I'll add this panel with just a bit of tape run out to give my focal tag my main tag a bit more prominence. I'm going to pop it up on foam tape. So I'm just going to put a little mark there where the halfway point on my card is because I want to get my tag in roughly the right place. But these ones I'm not going to add any foam tape to. I'm just going to pop a bit of glue on the back and pop them in line with this one, get roughly the same gap between them. And just get a little bit of deli paper to press those down, make sure they're good and stuck. So now I've got a piece of white card and a branchy leafy die, and I'm going to cut that out with that, and that is going to sit on there like that. So that brings a bit of the white forward and breaks up this. Uh, Bellini colour. So I've just added some glue to a few spots and now I'm going to lay this on top of here. Get the jelly paper again and press it down. I might just pop some foam tape behind those two. Stop them flapping around. And for my sentiment, I've got a happy birthday die. That I'm going to cut out of matte gold to give my happy birthday sentiment a bit more depth and dimension. 
I'm going to stack a couple of white die cuts behind it. It will be a bit fiddly to try and put craft foam behind it at this point. So I think this is probably my best bet. So I'm just going to press that down with the deli paper, make sure it's all in the right place. Now I can put some glue on the back of that and add that to the front of my card. If I just get a little bit of damp baby wipe on the end of my finger, I can go over any gluey bits on the foiled cardstock and wipe them off and that shouldn't disturb the ink beneath. You can also just give it a, a dry with a microfiber cloth and to really emphasize the middle part of this card to give some finishing touches and to draw the eye I'm going to add a little cluster of gold Nouveau drops. So here is the finished card. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. One thing that did occur to me though while I was putting it all together is I think if I was to do this again I would bring in a slightly smaller die for these two just to uh, emphasize the prominence of this area here. I think that kind of size hierarchy would work well on this card. Right, I think that'll do for today. As I say, this is part of a series, so do subscribe and ring the notification bell if you want to be notified when the next episode airs. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.